Hello YouTube, welcome to another Murphy's Law Top 10. Today we have uh, Top 10 Horror Video Games. This is not necessarily limited to survival horror games, it's just games with horror themes in general. Uh, the list is however limited to games that I've actually played myself. So uh, great, fantastic survival horror games like Fatal Frame that I've not played has gotten amazing reviews. They don't qualify. Also I've never really been a huge PC gamer. Uh, so anything that's PC only, like Slender or uh, Descent into Darkness, those are games that I haven't had a chance to play, so they are also not on the list. So just keep that in mind as we get to it. Um, and yeah, we'll just get right into it right now. Okay, so first up on number 10, we have the Splatterhouse series. This was made by Namco. The first game came out in 1988 for the Turbo Graphics. Subsequent games came out in Genesis um, 2 and 3, and then they recently did a newer one for the 360 and PS3. Um, this is probably the first, first horror-themed game that I've ever played. It's uh, For the time, you know, these are 8 and 16-bit graphics, or 16-bit graphics, sorry. Um, for the time, it was super, super creepy. Like, I just... There's a scene in the third game where you go into your son's room and his teddy bear's head falls out and it turns into a monster. Now, as like a 10-year-old who's playing this game, that kind of scene is freaking creepy. They are uh, side-scrolling beat-em-ups. The second and third games added more and more features to the game, and they're just super fun. The new one is also fun, but it's not as scary. It's more action-packed. There's like heavy metal blaring, and it focuses a lot on the gore, while the older games, in my opinion, were a lot creepier. Um, but yeah, so that's that's number 10 is the Splatterhouse series. Had a lot of fun with that one. Alright, next up at number 9 is Manhunt. So it's published by Rockstar in 2003 for PS2 and Xbox. Um, the game was very graphic for the time. Rockstar was coming off of the Grand Theft Auto controversy and... Uh, the game is is very graphic. Instead of being an open world game, this is a single player game. You are one man on a game show where you're forced to kill. But most, well, I should say all the kills in the game were up close and personal. Like you had the ability to strangle somebody with a bag or smash their head in with a with a hammer. It was uh, like I said, it was very graphic for the time and it was very intense because it was mostly a stealth game as well. So sneaking around um, and then adding in the the extreme violence of the game really made it uh, a great horror game in my opinion. Had a lot of good kills in it and was uh, it was just very good. And that's why it's at number nine for me. Number eight, we have The Suffering, Ties That Bind. This game was made by Midway in 2004 for PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Uh, it's mostly an action game. You, it takes place inside of a prison, and there's it's some part of the prison is shut down, like they used to do uh, mental patient experiments. Uh, this one is mostly supernatural horror with like ghosts and demons and stuff. You're not sure if what you're seeing is real or uh, or you know if if it's just your imagination. Um, it was interesting at the time because it gave you different options. You'd run into different characters and could either choose to be to do a good or a bad uh, thing to them, either like save them or, or slay them or whatever the options were. It's been a long time since I played it, um, but these resulted in the ending and your backstory. You didn't know, you don't know at the beginning if the character you play has done the crime he's accused of, um, and by making these choices, you get that you get that backstory at the end of the game with the ending of it. Um, and then what's really cool is this was based off of a real prison uh, that is supposedly haunted, and there's a documentary included on the game about the prison. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but it's got a lot of nice, creepy imagery and atmosphere, and that's what lands at a number eight on my list. What I said, baby. Just be afraid. At number seven, we have Condemned Criminal Origins. Uh, this was one of the launch titles, I believe, for the 360. came out in 2005, published by Sega. Um, it was a 360 exclusive, as well as its sequel. At least, no, I think the sequel is uh, both PS3 and 360. Um, but it's very story-driven, very creepy game. You play as a detective trying to solve a murder, and it starts out like a normal like criminal investigation, but it just gets more and more creepy and more and more weird the further you go on chasing this guy. Um, it's, the story is really well written. It's really well acted. It was a first-person game. The action is fun. It doesn't rely all on guns. There's a lot of hand-to-hand -hand in it as well. Um, 
But like I said, it's really, really creepy and really, really atmospheric. Um, and it was a nice early way to take advantage of the 360's hardware compared to the previous generation of games. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it. The second one kind of let me down towards the end. But overall, really good series. Really, really good games. I recommend you guys to check them out. Coming in at number 6, we have Dead Space, the series. Um, this was published by EA 2008, the original one anyway, for 360 and PS3. Uh, this game is a futuristic setting. It takes place on a space station or spaceship. can't remember. Like I said, it's been a while since I played it. Um, it kind of reminds me of Event Horizon in a way, because uh, there's they're aliens, or maybe they're ghosts or demons. You're not really sure. Um, you get this really cool like laser gun, but it's not always the most effective and uh, ammo is kind of scarce and the imagery is really you know really creepy there's a lot of stuff jumping out at you uh, you're not sure where they're gonna come from it's not like just hardcore throwing enemies at you action where you have tons of ammo it's like oh shit what's happening I better be careful when I'm going around this corner is that corpse alive is it gonna get me I don't know so really really fun game really really creepy one and two are fantastic three kinda takes a, a turn out of left field, changing the, the feel of the game, making it more of a Gears of War style, which I didn't really like, but overall, good series, really, really creepy imagery, and really, really good story. Coming in at number five, we have Alan Wake. This was made by uh, Microsoft Game Studios in 2010. It was a 360 exclusive as well as its sequel. I never actually played the sequel. This one is more of a psychological thriller. Um, there's a lot of creepy imagery. Uh, it's about a writer who goes to an island to, you know, get away from it all, as we've heard plenty of times in horror movies before, uh, and weird shit starts happening. Uh, it's, uh, kind of reminds me of Twin Peaks, and it's done in an episodic, uh, TV show kind of way, like you play through different episodes, and those are the, the chapters, missions, checkpoints, whatever you want to call them of the game. Uh, so it was kind of original in doing that. The storyline is really, really good. The, um... Uh, the combat system, which involves a f mixture of flashlights and guns, is really, really good. Uh, just overall, is a really good game. Very, very fun. Very, very creepy. Really good storyline. Definitely check that out if you uh, if you get the option to. All right, number four, we have the entire Resident Evil series. Uh, the first game was, uh, well, all the games were made by Capcom. The first one came out in 96. The series has been on PlayStation 1, 2, 3, GameCube, 360, uh, a bunch of different handhelds. Like, it's been all over the place. Um, I believe these were the first major survival horror games. Uh, the first four games, in my opinion, is all opinions, I don't, like, flip your shit. First four games were just amazing. They were perfect. They got better and better with each game. I never really played any of the side missions, like, uh, what is it, Survivor, or whatever, whatever the other ones are. I never really played those, but I did play the main games. Uh, five and six kind of took the series into an action area, and I didn't really like that. It kind of got rid of the, uh, survival and horror aspects of the game. I was like, oh, well, these are creatures, but... I'm not really fearing for my life here, um, so I didn't really like the, f the fifth and the sixth game, but one through four are amazing. Uh, the first game had uh, a live-action intro, which was really neat. It had a really, really good storyline. The first two, actually, are probably my favorite. They had great storylines, uh, multiple characters, multiple stories to play through. Um, there was a lot of puzzle solving, like move a statue, find a gem to open a door to get in here, put your weapons there, mix these things together, so on and so forth. Um, and they just, uh, everything culminated with number four, in my opinion, being the best of the series, and then they just went straight downhill from there. But still, overall, they land at number four on my, my, uh, my list here. If they, five and six had been better games, then I would have them higher on the list, but that's where they're at. So, yeah, number four, everyone knows Resident Evil. Great series. Could be better recently. Let's hope it gets better. Coming in at number three is a GameCube exclusive. I think you know what I'm talking about here. Eternal Darkness. Game made by Nintendo for t in 2002 for the GameCube. Um, this game was very unique in its uh, gameplay mechanics. You played as several different characters. Uh, they were all in different points of time. You... Um, and then there was a main hub character that would that would get you into these other characters. Um, the graphics were pretty good for the time. It was on GameCube. The one 
main thing about this game that I have never seen ever even tried to be replicated in any other game is the insanity meter. Um, every time you encountered a, mo encountered a monster, your insanity meter would go up. Every time you defeated a monster, your insanity meter would go down. Um, if it got too high, your character started to hallucinate. So th things uh, like, um, like they would hallucinate themselves dying. Uh, but not only did this hallucination screw with your character, they screwed with you as the player too. So they started off as simple as walking into a room and like your head exploding. Then the screen would fade to black and it would reset and you'd be back in the room. So these were just meant to screw with you a little bit. But then they went further and broke the fourth wall. Uh, you'd walk into a room, take a couple steps, the screen would go blue, like a blue screen of death from a Windows computer. And you'd be like, what the hell? And it would sit there for a couple minutes. Or it would go black and say, your memory card has been erased, please hit the reset button. Um, a little mute button would appear in the bottom right hand corner and make you think that your TV was muted and all the sound would go out. It was it was just fantastic in the way that it screwed with you as the player and it really made you unsettled as you're exploring like what's gonna happen next, what's gonna pop out of me. So not only are you trying to fight monsters, but you're also having to deal with all these hallucinations that your character is dealing with and then you as the player are also dealing with. Um, I know it screwed with a lot of people when it first happened because there wasn't a lot of talk about it until the game had already been out for a while. So I remember playing that absolutely loving it. Hope to find a copy of it soon for GameCube and replay it. But yeah, that insanity meter was perfect, and I wish they'd do a sequel to this game, but I doubt that's ever going to happen. But yeah, that's it. Number three, Eternal Darkness. Coming in at number two is a rather newer game. It's Last of Us. The uh, game was made by Naughty Dog in 2013, this year. Uh, it was a PS3 exclusive. This game is amazing. Um... It's very story-driven, as Naughty Dog likes to do. Um, the story is very powerful. It has a lot of emotional scenes, and if you're the kind of person that really gets into their games, these may uh, emit an emotional response from you that you didn't see coming. They, are, it's just the gameplay itself is solid. All the controls are solid. There's a lot of creepy moments. There are uh, a version of zombies, and there's also like humans. This is in like an apocalyptic, uh, post-apocalyptic world, and so you have to deal with fighting humans who want the same resources that you do, and then you also have to deal with these blood-crazed zombie creatures. And the mix of them and the way that you fight and the mechanics and everything else just culminates into this most fantastic, like, horror game. Like, I'd put this as probably the best horror movie of the year if you was, wasn't, like, interactive. This is, like, the, the culmination of interactive media here. Um... Just the way, like, I keep them repeating myself now. The the story and everything is just fantastic. So, this is an absolute must play. If you don't own a PS3, you need to go get, you need to go play it at a friend's house. If you do own a PS3 and you haven't played this game, you need to go pick it up. Um, on top of having one of the most amazing single player storylines ever played, it also has a pretty fun multiplayer, uh, centered around saving your survivors and team death matches. Uh, very very fun. Number two, Last of Us. And at number one, as you can tell in the video that's already started, it is the Silent Hill series. Um, this series is my favorite survival horror series. It's better than Resident Evil, in my opinion. Um, it's made by Konami. The first game came out in 99. It's a few years after the first Resident Evil. Uh, it's been on PlayStation 1, 2, 3, the 360. I don't think the GameCube ever got any games. I think the Wii got a remake of the first one, but it got horrible reviews, so we don't really count that. Um, now, I know a lot of people listening to this are probably like, whoa, 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 you hated Resident Evil 5 and 6, but you liked the more recent Silent Hill games. Well, they weren't the best. They weren't as good as the first three. Uh, I really liked the first three. Four was kind of different, but wasn't horrible. Um, and then, uh, what is it, Downpour? That game was got kind of bad reviews. It was the first time Konami outsourced the game, and they outsourced to American Company, so it kind of had the feel of the movie, and I think they even made references to the movie in it. Um, or not Downpour, Homecoming, I'm sorry. Uh, Homecoming had references to the movie in it. I liked it. I didn't mind it. It wasn't as good as the first three, but I didn't mind it. Uh, Downpour kind of went back to its roots, and that game was a little bit closer to the first three, although for a current-gen game, it was lacking in the graphical department. Um, but overall, the series is my favorite. Instead of it being uh, physical threats like zombies in Resident Evil, it's more supernatural. There's uh, demons and monsters. Um, 
every uh, every iteration has an emotional con- you know there's an emotional story behind it instead of just trying to survive. Like uh, the first one, the guy loses his daughter. The second one, uh, the dude's dead wife tells him to come back to Silent Hill, and so on and so forth. And they're just they're fantastic games. They are my all time favorite horror games. I will still play every single one that comes out. Like I said, Homecoming wasn't the best, but it also wasn't. Resident Evil 5, <laughs> in my opinion. Downpour was really good, just needs a little bit of a graphic update. So, the next Silent Hill that comes out, I hope, is as good as Downpour with the nice graphics that we uh, that we come to expect from this day and age, especially with the, the PS4 coming out. So, yeah, that is my number one, is Silent Hill. All right, and that's going to do it for our top ten horror games. Hope you enjoyed the vid. I put a lot of work into this one. I'm trying yet another editing software program. I'm trying to just get this, these videos as best quality as I can get for you guys. Really trying to amp it up here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, comment, subscribe. Why don't you guys let me know what uh, your favorite horror games are in the comments down below. And uh, we can discuss them in the comments because I always like talking to you guys if you, if you guys want to respond. Um, any kind of input or feedback, let me know as always. And as always, fight evil, play video games.